Okay, here we are at part six of the 911T restoration. And if you didn't see the other videos, this was a uh, epically rusty car. And a lot of heroic rust repair has been done to arrive at this point. And the engine is about to go in. So it is quite a momentous sort of time period. This is the 2.8 twin spark uh, engine for the car and with PMO carburetors, a 901 transaxle, which came out of this car. And as you can see, the engine bay is all ready to accept the engine. The twin spark is driven by these MSDs and a couple of coils there. I know things look a lot different than part five. It's been, uh, I think, a couple years now. So all of the rust has been repaired. And the rust was copious, <laughs> to say the least. So the floors were all done and painted. These tubes were repaired. They had some cracks in them where the suspension mounted. And all of the rockers are installed. It is just so pleasant to see it like this. It'll never be this clean again, of course. Underneath, anyway. And I have the rear part of the body in primer already. I did all the rust repair and body work on the rear part. And I'm sort of at an impasse as to what to do with the rest of the body. So I'm, um, I'm putting the engine in so I can start it up because I'm eager to hear it, and I also want to uh, be able to move it around a lot easier. So I think that what I'm going to be doing with this car is going is building sort of like a 911R recreation. And the R was the uh, factory race car in 67. They only made about 20 of them or so, and they were very, very lightweight. And the reason for that is because I wanted a performance a real performance 911 because I already have a, a stock uh, long hood. So I built this performance engine, but my conundrum was, do I put flares? You know, do I put the wide like RS flares on this car? And ultimately I went back and forth, but I decided not to do that because ultimately the reason is that I believe stylistically that the long hoods do not look good with the big wide flares. That only the um, rubber bumper cars, you know, 74 and later, actually look good with like the turbo flares. That's just a personal uh, aesthetic of mine, but um, I wanted the narrow body car ultimately, so I said I'm going to build it real light and it's going to have, you know, the slightly narrower tires on it. I'm probably going to go with 205.50s, and I already have the rims. I have four new Maxi Light rims, which are actually very surprisingly uh, excellent looking quality. I mean, they are they were quite inexpensive. They were less than $200 each, so I'm pleased about that. Sixes front and rear on the rims. And I have the fiberglass front fenders, which I got off of eBay because uh, they were quite beat up but they were, they've never been installed on a car. And these are the R fenders. So they have the, uh, the different lights in the front for the lightweight. And I'm doing a bunch of stuff with the suspension. I've, I've rebuilt the Connie shocks. And I've also put the Elephant Racing uh, brass bushings in. Uh, I'm gonna do that in the rear trailing arms as well. These bushings are really, really nice. I mean, uh, I should probably show them to you. They're so sweet. Um, well worth getting. The ride will be slightly harsher, but I've seen varying reports on that. Some people say, oh, it's, it's, a, it's the same. Other people say, it's, oh, it's much harsher. I've never noticed the difference between rubber bushings and urethane, so I don't think I'll notice the bush difference with, um, you know, brass. Basically, this is a metal-on-metal metal joint now. They have these nice grease nipples, and these arms, without the suspension on, move up and down with finger pressure and zero play. I mean, it is so nice compared to the rubber bushings, which have, you know, quite a bit of resistance there. 
Okay, maybe we'll show you uh, some other stuff on the inside. Uh, not that there's much to see. Or maybe not, maybe this is it. So there it is, a thing of beauty once again, and even more beautiful that it's going into the car. The oil tank actually had a, a little hole in it up here, and I, um, I tried to solder a piece on, but it, it just didn't work. So I, I put a piece of metal over it and then um, epoxied over everything. And it is, um, it is perfectly clean inside, so I think that'll be okay, you know, versus buying a new oil tank. And I probably would have bought a new oil tank, but I'm still playing around with the oil lines. This has a threaded fitting, the engine has a nipple, and I'm not sure which way, you know, ultimately I'm going to go. And I'm also trying to decide on the front oil filter, I mean the front oil cooler, you know, what kind of lines to run if to buy the more expensive elephant racing finned lines or to go with like the um, British American transfer they have a nice oil kit which is only a thousand bucks where they run um, you know air equipped lines along here and I don't think I like the look of that however and, and they don't cool as well obviously because it's it's a uh, rubber line inside so I don't know. It's sort of between up to cost there. I don't know if I want to spend five or six thousand dollars on a on the fancy elephant racing oil cooler kit. I may just um, spend a thousand dollars and get the one from British American Transfer. Uh, the rear shocks for now. I've these are actually the original Bogues or Bogey. I'm not sure how you pronounce that. I guess in German it would be Bogey because they pronounce every letter. And they're, they're oil shocks, they're not bad. They're, so they're exactly the same as stock, the valving and everything, they're perfect. And I'll probably update those later, but I wanna see how the car drives first before I start changing things on the suspension. So I'm just gonna start with the stock setting and then see, um, you know, see what I'm gonna add there. Okay, that's it, part six, signing off. Um, it's been an epic, I don't know how many years, it's been seven, eight years since I started this project. But there have been other cars in the way. I restored this XK120 in the meantime, and I've been working on a million other cars. I have so many, I have too many projects, but okay, sending off.